Is it Friday already, boys? Oh, it is. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, David Sisboomba on Off the Rails Friday. Jam-packed hour. Mm -hmm. In a few minutes, we'll welcome in Ray Ferraro, ESPN analyst, former NHLer, 1,258 games in total. Also, what would Off the Rails Friday be without Doug McLean? On the rails. That's what it would be. We'll get to him in about 34 and a half minutes. In the meantime, we're glad you are with us wherever you are. Watching, listening, Sportsnet 590, the fans, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary, Sportsnet 360, or Sportsnet Plus. Every Sportsnet. We're on every Sportsnet. Wherever. How was the $140 million it was good. Mercedes? It was good. I looked at it. I, I passed. <laughs> you didn't get it? No, I didn't get it. Didn't Cheap. Get it. Couldn't, Chiefs couldn't game. Uh, but fun event. Thank you for yeah, asking. Goodness. It was good. Sorry. Hope, hope you're feeling better. I know yeah. you were a little under the weather. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you <laughs> are. Guys, I'm gonna get I think through. the thought of a car costing 144 million made you sick. That might have been I, it. I uh, think I'm the next stop here. Yeah. Like, I just, you know, it's we're sitting in this little Petri dish. Neither of you have been feeling great for two weeks. I got one coming for sure. Oh, so. All right. And it's not Master's <laughs> Thursday, so we're good to go. Well, uh, once again, this hour of Real Kipper and Born brought to you by Bet365. We'll get to Ray in a few seconds. But uh, overall, I wish I could tell you that last night's double overtime win by the Edmonton Oilers was a thriller. Yeah. Mm. But it wasn't. But Edmonton fans, Canadian fans, mm. I think will take, yes. take the win. You know, it's funny, just the the progression of playoffs. And in that first round, it's setting the tone and it's personal mm -hmm. and it's hit everyone and shoot everything and it's mayhem. And last night was a pretty organized hockey game. You know, two teams played within their structure, wasn't a ton of chances. The Oilers found a so way. It's almost like too much structure now. Too much coaching. Too much, like, chess. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, everyone's any 50-50 puck, both sides are pulling out. So it's, <laughs> it doesn't make for... But yeah, I mean, there were some great moments, obviously. I do feel differently about the series, for sure. I do too. Where I went into it thinking, I'm like, oh, I think the Stars are way deeper. I think the Stars are a better team, more, you know, more good players. But, I, you know, you got the two top-end guys, right? Like, it's, a, it's depth versus top of the lineup. I, mm -hmm. So I think Edmonton looked pretty good. Let me ask you something here. If Robertson finds a way to get the inside of the post yep. off of the McDavid double minor mm -hmm. and they're up one nothing, do you feel any differently? Yes. I do. You would have gone more with the deeper Dallas team. No, no, no. I, I would no, I would feel the same. Sorry. You would feel the same yeah, way. I would feel the same way. Okay. I thought they looked right. way more you, evenly matched. Would you sit there and go, ah, well, you just found a way to I lose? I felt and... differently about the chances of the teams winning for sure. Yeah. But you know, the I, I said going into the series, the joke I made was that it's a bunch of retirees and, and yeah. teenagers. And I think as you go on in playoffs, that's hard on retirees. That's a lot of hockey for the old guys. And uh, the young guys can get exposed because these are big moments and they haven't been there yeah. before. I do think the Oilers are in a pretty good spot here. The moment they killed that double minor oh. off of McDavid Dave's just been resting. was the moment i said you're letting a tiger out of the cage right now yeah. and you if you didn't win it there you will lose this hockey game yeah mcdavid made he obviously got robbed by ottinger on the one play when he pulled it back he makes a great play to get the shot but um yeah they they let the oilers hang around and got the result they deserved all right let's get to him ray ferraro been on the show before and disappeared on us like david copperfield <laughs> but we found him yes. he's back and he's in New York City <laughs> getting ready for the big game, too. Rangers, Panthers. Razor, what's going on, man? How are you? Oh, I'm just looking at the billboards of Kip all over Madison Square Garden, <laughs> the place that you built, right? Well, listen, we're, a... we're coming up on our 30th anniversary of our Stanley Cup win. We had, Amazing. We had Alex Kovalev on yesterday. Oh. And in a, in a nutshell, I asked him, you know, in today's world, how many Michigan goals would you have scored today, right? And he's like... The puck needs to stay on ice, not in the uh, air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how about Kip? Whenever we'd have a three-on-three -three game after practice, if you had Alex on your team, you won. You just you won the game. 
I know he someone. Did whatever he wanted to do. Someone was someone was bringing me a Gatorade. I knew that for sure. <laughs> yes, he was the best. What a what a player! And it is amazing. Thirty years, um, you know, since you guys won, and uh, it is a big deal uh, around here. Like it, it. I mean, maybe not surprisingly, but it is a big deal. And the people really, you hear it inside the building when they bring one of the guys back. The people connect to that team, man, and they'll remember that forever. Okay, we're going to get into the Western Conference because I definitely want to get your thoughts on Edmonton and Dallas. But in the meantime, uh, picking up on that vibe in, in New York City, how much are, are, are fans kind of disappointed maybe or just did, did it bring did, did it bring that excitement down a little bit with such a frustrating loss in game one for New York? I think they were disappointed. I think they were surprised. Um, the building got really quiet pretty quickly because almost from the, the first shift out of the gate, Florida spent most of the time in the Rangers zone until maybe the, the last 10 minutes of the game when the Rangers had a pretty good flurry and it was still one nothing. Like that's that's I don't think can be you know, forgotten and is, is maybe ineffective as the Rangers were for a lot of the game. Uh, it was still one, nothing. You know, they were, they were right there. They Schneider had a breakaway, hit the goalpost. Uh, Cooley had a breakaway and got stopped. Uh, Florida didn't have, I would say a multitude of chances, but what they do guys is like they forecheck and they grind and they're big and there's no room. And, the Rangers would spend all this time trying to get out of their zone. Finally, they flip it out to center and they get to change. And then it starts all over again. Like there was very little danger in Florida's end of the ice for 50 minutes. And I think the, like the building got, got really like almost like they were watching a movie. They just sat back. There was nothing to cheer for. There was, you can't really out hit Florida. They're so big. Mm -hmm. So where do you get your momentum from you and energy? You have to have the puck and they just didn't have it. So Sam McKee here on our show likes to say that the Panthers play offended, right? They're just constantly everything bother after the whistle. They're mm -hmm. in your face. They kind of have this great energy to them. Mark Messier yesterday says that, Hey, maybe Rempe needs to come in for the Rangers. Maybe they need to get emotional and try to match that. Do you, how do you feel about that? Or is that just playing into Florida's hands, Ray? No, but I don't know how effective it can be, Justin. Like I, I think Rempe's going to play today mm -hmm. and I'm telling you for a guy that plays, you know, six to eight minutes, man, does he charge the building yeah. up as, as soon as he hits the ice, like there's very few players that you know are on the ice without even seeing him. Like if you're looking this you know, to your right and he jumps on the ice to your left, you know he's there because the building, the building sees it. Um, the the Panthers have done a really good job um, kind of limiting that scrum, extra penalty, you know, have to kill off being over rambunctious. They haven't done that. Um, really since maybe early in that Boston series, right around the, you know, I'll call it the Bennett game, if you will. But like, since then, they just haven't taken many penalties. And it, here's the thing, like there, there are players you can run into a, into a spot where they're maybe not quite effective mm -hmm. uh, because your team is big and physical across the board. Who are you going to do that to, to Florida? Because they're all kind of the same. Yeah. They're, I, their smallest guy is Evan Rodriguez, and he plays with two really big guys. And so it really doesn't matter. You know, like they're they're built really well, really deeply. No, no, like one guy carries the load for them. Um, Barkov's a, I think, is an amazing player. Uh, Kachuk's their engine and their heartbeat, and they're just deep and big. I this is a hard series for somebody to beat Florida, whether it's the Rangers or somebody else, four out of seven. And then that's why, like, I love Rempe, Razor, but he can't single-handedly now jack up no. the New York Rangers. It's got to be, like, 19 other guys that look at themselves after that game one. What's surprising to me is that I, I would have I would have believed that this roster, this New York Ranger roster, would know exactly what they were expecting out of Florida and got it. And yet they still kind of looked like deer in headlights on a, on an occasion. And the worst one for me was the uh, Mikola hit on on Hurdle at the end. Heedle, yeah. Heedle. 
and yep. and the game's over and Heedle takes like 10 seconds to get up like you know you kind of really got me but there's no emotion towards saying hey you don't get a freebie here nobody addressed him nobody said anything and it's like boys did you did you not know what was coming well okay so it looked really odd the hit right like it was a big hit and it was right at the buzzer i think yeah. it might have been one second left it was so i i guess this is a half defense of the rangers but i'm where i'm standing i couldn't see it like, like it was right yeah. down the boards and you know the way the garden you know the benches are and the rink is and the way that corner it uh, skews seats. it skews yeah it, it's it's weird it's yeah, not so, a clean look that's right i don't know if everybody saw it i i, I on the ranger bench i i don't know if yeah. anybody really saw it that's and interesting i think at that point guys were kind of turned you know when the buzzer goes you turn back and go pat your yeah. goalie i think they were kind of half on the way back and they know about it now yeah but but he, i'll compare them you know because we're in toronto to the leafs like you know, the Leafs wanted to add a, one more grinding forward. Like, one guy doesn't, and I'm speaking of Rempe here, one guy doesn't change your team. You need a herd. And so if you don't have that, then you have to play to what the strength of your team is. And what I thought the Rangers didn't do was they didn't, they didn't get out of their end at all. So then they were slow in the middle. They never had the puck. And when they did, the Panthers stay up really tight so you got to chip it past them maybe it's not your favorite play but get it off your stick quicker in your zone get it up faster chip it in more and try and spend some time down there because the one and outs against florida if that's all you got they're they're going to beat you because they spend too much time in your zone and I wonder if you think, Ray, that there should be some of that, um, you know, this emotion and competitiveness in Florida's crease. Like, uh, in the playoffs, there's been six goalie interference uh, challenges. Florida's been involved in every single one. Like, Bobrovsky's <laughs> been... really? Yeah. Have they really? Yeah, well, it's been That's both funny. ends, their end and the offensive yeah, end. Yeah. But, like, Bobrovsky's been fantastic, has he not? Like, it feels like the Rangers yeah. are going to have to fall on this guy at some point or something. Well, what's it? Uh, so, he gave up... They lost 5-1 in game one to Boston. Since then, they've given up eight goals in six games. Wow. If you don't, if you don't get on top of his toes, man, he's yeah. going to stop it. And the again, I think part of the problem becomes if you don't spend enough time there, mm -hmm. you you get one shot, he stops it, goes to the corner. You need a second shot, you need a rebound, so a guy like Kreider can get to the front, and he can stay there. And once he gets there, then you got then you've got a chance for a rebound, a tip. Maybe Bobrovsky makes a awkward save and he can't get across because if he gets out on a shot right now, he stops everyone. Like just think of the like eight goals in six games. They never have to score much yeah. to win. And they're super comfortable. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. They're super comfortable playing two one games. They'll play those all day. They don't, they don't seem to worry about that too much. So, Ray, just like any other team, you, you live and die by your, your best players for the New York Rangers here. Yeah. If by chance Rempe finds a way to kind of pull it into the ditch a little bit and slow this thing right down, does that does that help or hurt Zabanajad and Panarin? Well, I, th I think if there's more energy, you know, energy is infectious. You know, Kip, like when you were the type of player that if you made a big hit on a four yeah. check, you could feel yeah. how that the puck wasn't clean. Now the next guy makes a hit, and pretty soon you got something going. And then the next shift comes out, and every the building's a little more jumpy, and you've got a, the next line feels energetic going over the boards because there's lots of times you go over and everybody's kind of waiting to assess the shift. But when there's momentum, say Panarin, Trocheck, Zabanajad, all quiet in game one. Maybe they get a little zip going over the boards. The last six games, last five games, uh, sorry, last five games, the Banner Jags has got six shots on net. Yeah. Yeah. So he he can't be a non-factor if the Rangers are going to win. 
So, like he just can't be. No. And that's what, unfortunately, that the pressure on the big guys now is that. Like depth is great and all that. You need to have it. You need to have health to win. But if your big guys aren't near their best, you, you've got real problems. So what are your thoughts on the pressure that these guys the attention they get now, like we've talked ad nauseum in this show, you know, the first round it was Mitch Marner had struggled, then it was Elias Pettersson had struggled. We're talking about Zibanejad. Mm -hmm. Like Vancouver was getting 12 shots a night. There's so much coaching now and so much attention on these individuals. Yeah. You know, it just seems like a different sport for the elite scorers when you get to the playoffs right now. It, I don't think there's any question. I think that's why when I look at Leon Dreisaitl and what he's three. done over the last three years, I'm like, that, that Like, I think cumulatively, that guy's been the best player in the last three years in the playoffs. Yeah. Amazing. It, like, it, it seems like every game he scores or he makes a really important play. I, I To your point, uh, Justin, I, I, I think you, you look at your regular season numbers and then just throw them out the window in the playoffs more than any other time I can remember um, in a regular season and playoffs. Um, if you if you look at a team, oh, they're twenty six percent in the playoffs. Well, you'll get a couple of three power play goal games in the regular season. You get some team on a back to back or four and five games, and you just rip them apart one night. Well, here you don't. You get the same team every night. Your tendencies are scouted and rescouted, yeah. and the players are now used to the to hearing about that. They they're used to how to attack it. They know how to attack it. There was no that there, there was not that detail prior. So you could find your way out of a hole. Like, so I just talked about Zabanajad. Adam Fox doesn't have a point in five games. If Adam Fox doesn't get on the score sheet, the Rangers lose. Yeah. Like in this series. And yet every time the puck goes into their corner, somebody runs into Adam Fox. He never gets away clean. It's like Quinn Hughes. Every time he went back. Man, he had the first four checker and then the second. And in the regular season, it's not that way. It's just not, there's not the urgency to play that way or there's not the physical capability of a team to play that way. But in the playoffs, they can. And so the guys that, the guys that can succeed now, uh, they're, they're a special breed. They really are. Uh, to pull a cliche out real early in a series of must win you kind of got that feeling in game two in new york for the rangers here you don't envision the rangers losing tonight and then winning the next four out of five games do you uh i think i'm, I'm gonna whiff on the year but i think it's if you lose the first two games at home in this round the conference final or the semi-final whatever they used to call it if you lose the first two games at home, the last team that won that series was in 1954, and it was Detroit. Jeez. 21 times. Yeah. 20 times they've lost, including last year, Carolina lost the first two games to Florida. You lose the first two at home, and the numbers tell you you're dead. So it is. it really feels like this is a must win. So, Ray, are you good on this series, yes. Kip? We turn the page. Yeah. Uh, not sure if you were able to catch last night's game, but uh, yep. pretty good opener. You know, eh, it's okay. You know, what, what are your thoughts uh, after game one? Did it change how you feel about the Oilers or Dallas or the way that series was going to shake out? No, two things uh, stood out for me. One, Dallas really misses Rope Hints. Yes. And when he comes back into the series, whenever it is, um, that's, I'll say it's a game changer for Dallas. It doesn't mean they're going to, changes the series but oh they're a way better team hints is a really really good impactful player for them and they i thought they missed him a lot and mm -hmm. i think they miss him every game he plays but in a series like this he's big and fast and powerful i think they missed him uh i also think the this edmonton team is built to win games they would have never won prior uh you know four or five years ago maybe um Think of the first round they won a six months 13. ago. <laughs> yeah, first, first, it doesn't feel like it. Like, when was it? I had to think and look. I'm like, oh yeah, it was LA. But they 13 shots, they won that game in LA. They they never got the puck in their zone. They yeah. got one, they scored once and they won. I don't think they win that before. I think their best players are more content and maybe 
a more understanding that they can help win without scoring three points. So in a game that is 0-0, they'll just keep playing it. They'll just keep playing the game knowing that if they get the opportunity, they they you know they they're in good hands. Their their big guys are going to score. Didn't change anything for me except man, that's a big win on the road. Um, Edmonton got certainly fortunate in overtime when Robertson hits the post twice in, I don't know, 10 seconds there on the power play. But, man, they kill penalties. They grind. They're top five guys. They, three of the five of them seem to score every game. It's like it's crazy how good the top end of that roster has been. And I know uh, a grenade blew up off of uh, Kulak's stick for one of the goals but those type of mistakes are now far and few than we saw yeah. at the beginning of the season for the Oilers and it's led by Bouchard yeah um I guess or in a lot of ways because he often was the guy making that yes, mistake correct um he could certainly early in the year he could take a nap for about eight or ten minutes turn over a puck or two press to try and make it up, make another mistake. Not like anymore. The game was, no, he's been fantastic. Man, of the, I, I know people often talk about free agent signings and Zach Hyman being one of the best um, over the last 10 or 15 years, and certainly it, it is. But what about the trade two years ago that Kenny Holland pulls off getting Matias Ekholm? Yeah. That guy's a player. He's a beast in the playoffs, and, and, and he seems to be perfect for Boucher. And a leader, and in many ways, yeah. as much of a leader as McDavid and Dreisaitl for me now. Yeah. He has stepped up. He was absolutely hidden, and I don't know, buried's not the right word in Nashville. Yeah. But but they had so many good D. Exactly. You'd always talk about, you talk about Weber, and oh man, what a great player he is. And then, you know, Ham Hughes was there for a long stretch of time, and then you still wouldn't get to Ekholm, right? There was, Yo oh, Yossi. Oh, Yossi, yeah, man. And, and, oh, yeah, and Ekholm. He's such like a he stud. He was just an, yeah. another guy. So they're, they're built different. I, I, I like the fact that they can be patient um, and calm in a game that is really hard to be that way in. Um, it is going to be madness when they get back for game three and you know, Dallas is in the, you know, they're in the same boat really. Uh, it, well, not really. Of course they are. They're in the same boat as the Rangers, um, at, you know, lost for game one at home. And now road teams win more on the road. Road teams win games in the playoffs more now than they ever have. It is, it is remarkable to see they have a, a better one loss record in the playoffs. Um, and, you know, both road teams go in and drag out wins in game one. How has your experience been covering playoffs this year, Ray? You having fun? Uh, I love it. Yeah? It's fun. He's at the gym Man. every day. He's in never, been, never better shape than <laughs> yeah. when he's on the road in the playoffs. Although I did I did get my ass kicked playing golf from Joe Micheletti yesterday. Oh, wow. Uh, Joe, really? Joe had, yeah, Joe's steady, Man, Where'd he take you? Uh, Sleepy Hollow. Ooh. And... What a beautiful place. If people are listening that are golf fans that don't know it, just Google Sleepy Hollow. They'll show you. The picture that will come up will be their 16th hole. It's a square green, and it is the coolest looking hole. It's a it's a beautiful place. So I spent the off day there yesterday, which was awesome. But the, the games are great. They're fun. They're important. They're intense. And, um, you know, it's been uh, it's been a really good run. Well, we certainly uh, appreciate you doing uh, this today for us, yes. especially on a Zoom. You're in your hotel room. Uh, where I pushed everything over to that side of the bed. You can't see but it, the grenade that went off over oh, there. Oh, okay, but. because I was wondering if, if you made your bed or the, that was the hotel service because it's an interesting way to line up the pillows. You know, well, like that's a, hiding. That's hiding. A, it's like a know what behind it. It's, it's kind of like a barrier. It's a, it's a pyramid, my friend. A pyramid of pillows back there. If those things fall over, that's not going to be pretty. You're, we're going to have to set in the SWAT team to find you. Hey, Razor. You thanks for doing this, buddy. Great job, and keep up the great work. ESPN. Thanks, guys. Be thanks, Ray. Peace, bud. ESPN's Ray Ferraro, one of the best.
He absolutely is. You see Google the Green? No, I haven't Googled Sleepy Hollow. Let's have a look. What, what do you got for us, Sam? The Green's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. He was right. I am blown away. I'm a golf fan, and I am blown away by it. A little private by the looks of cool. it. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hopefully very cool. Going down there to get a tea time or anything, but yeah. yeah there you go. Hey, nice to hear from you. Hang Ray. with me and yeah, we'll Razor see. and Mass, and we'll, yeah. we'll get you on somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he knows people who knows people. That's true. Uh, great to see Razor there. That was awesome to have him on. Yes, it was. All right, uh, game time quickly before we go to break here. Yeah. Uh, it's game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. So, uh, Rangers tonight, minus 105. Uh, Florida Panthers, minus 115. Uh, I think if you, if there's a game where you're going to get the absolute best effort out of the New York Rangers and they're going to get one, it feels like this is it. Like if they lose this one, like you guys were talking about, kind of feels like it's over. Yeah. So you're probably going to get the absolute A effort out of the New York Rangers. So probably lean on that side of it. I was looking at when, uh, when will series finish odds and with the Florida Panthers and the New York Rangers, uh, the favorite for uh, when that series will end will be the same odds for Game Six and Game Seven. So Bet Three Six Five still anticipates that this game, that this series is going to go long. If you wanted to uh, get really spicy there, you know, with a Florida win tonight, minus plus three seventy five for Game Four. So that would be a be a long shot, but yeah. decent odds. The Edmonton Oilers and Dallas Stars, they think that it's going to go seven or six or seven games as well. They both think they're going to be long series with Game Six and Seven at the same odds. At plus 190. So a couple good series for us there. And uh, that was game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay, let's throw it a break and we can go with uh, Doug McLean a little longer. Plus, uh, if you want to send in some text messages. It's Friday. Let's get your text. The end, 590-590 is where to send them to us. All Perfect. right. Doug McLean on the conference final. What moves forward? Also, Waddell stepping down mm. in Carolina. We'll get Max thoughts on that as well. Plenty more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. Nick Kipper, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. Now it's the man, the myth, the legend. He's done it all. Coach, general manager. Mm -hmm. Wrote a book. With crayons. Let's welcome him in, Doug McLean. Someone typed it for him. Mac, where are you? Back in PEI. You're on the, the Canadian side. Just trying to relax here. I don't need the book promo anymore. I got it right here in my uh, in my study here. Wow. Got it. Right in. So there you go. Nice. Busy now. Like, what's... what's... I, I had a, look, I had a busy day. I... Um, lawn service was here today. Then I had to rake for an hour and a half. Amazing. I got the heart rate up to 130 rake in the yard. And then I did 40 minutes of yoga. Like it's been a, just uh, relaxing, having a cup of water here. And were you charging that shirt the whole time? Or did you unplug, forget to unplug it before <laughs> the show? Yes. For those of you that can't see on our <laughs> Zoom call, that is a very loud uh, shirt. That is, I just picked it out because I have to play golf tomorrow morning at 7.50. So I wanted to get out and make sure it's, uh, you know, it's ready to go. So, uh, well, we hope you're, you know, ready, you're ready to go on um, your key analysis, playoff analysis. We're down to four teams. You've been down this path before. You think you're close. Then you find yourself down a game or two and, and chasing it. And I'm not sure where Dallas or the Rangers feel after their game one, but uh, you can blink pretty fast and find yourself on the outside looking in here. You know what? It's funny. I, I was trying to think back to when we played Philly in, in the playoffs in the second round. And I went back and looked at this, at the, uh, at the scores. And we went into Philly and won two, nothing in game one, lost game two in Philly, lost game three in Florida. And, uh, and, and went back and won in Philly a second time. So, in double overtime. So it's funny how series can go. If you, you know, just because you lose, you know, you win a road game, you lose a game at home. It, 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 it's, it's really interesting how it can unfold in different ways. So I don't get too carried away about one game. It's always nice on the road to get that win, but um, you know, we've seen some great hockey. 
Rangers Florida to me was a, I mean, I've never seen the Rangers look so non, were they non-interested or did Florida make them look not, you mm-hmm. know, non-engaged. So I expect a better game tonight, but I really enjoyed the Dallas uh, Edmonton game. Uh, look, Edmonton learned a lot in that Vancouver series, boys. They, they really did. I mean, that was a, that was a learning experience to go through what they went through there and have to battle and grind out, um, you know, especially in the last game. Five-on-five five play. We talk about their special teams, 36% in the power play, and their penalty killing has been absolutely unbelievable. But the way they're playing five-on-five five is pretty pretty special for the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start with a question on the uh, on the other series because I'm interested that you talked about the Rangers being uninterested. Some of the analysis since has been like, ah, put Rempe in. We talked with Ray Ferraro about that. Where do you stand on the idea of trying to play Florida's game rather than just committing more to your own strengths? All right, right now it seems like the plan for the Rangers is to go go be Florida when I don't know that they can out Florida, Florida. Well, yeah, you know what? What, what I'd be most concerned about is is – the Panthers forecheck. I mean, the Rangers are a, are a skating team. They're a fairly quick team. They move the puck reasonably well out of their own end. And my analytics uh, person, I've hired Mer- uh, Megan Chaika to be my analytics person for the playoffs. And uh, I made a note today that, you know, she, she did some great work on the Rangers for, or on the Panthers forecheck. Yeah. They couldn't get it going and it, and it affected the flow of the game. If they don't get Panarin and some of these guys with speed coming through the neutral zone and being creative at the blue line, you know, it all starts on the forecheck. And right now the Panthers are the best forechecking team in the NHL. They were in the regular season and they've been the best forechecking team in the playoffs. We know Paul Maurice Mack has been around a very long time and, and his record for a guy that's done everything except win a Stanley Cup um, is pretty phenomenal. But I've never... He, seen... Hey, listen. He's never been this good a coach I just, as the I, way he's coached this team. I, I, Not even close. I don't think I can recall a, a coach I've watched in the last little while. I've never had a feeling like this where I think a coach knows his team better than his team knows his their, themselves. He is so in tune with this team on what they need, what they don't need, when they need a tongue lashing, when they need a, a pat on the back. It is remarkable to even hear him in his post-game comments. They asked him about Lomberg's disallowed goal, and he's like, I love the call. Yeah. <laughs> against, <laughs> against his own team. He's, he's like, I, I love the call, and you're like, oh, you're full of crap. Yeah. And he's like, as long as I get it for my guy, yeah. it's a good call. Yeah. I'm like, but this guy, this guy can't miss right now. Well, you know what? He, he said... Uh, Look, he, he left Winnipeg, and I say he got fired. He says he quit. I, I don't know what the story was. I say he got fired. I, I don't believe he walked away. So that's fine. He got he got to do that. But I'll tell you what. He got a chance to go to Florida. Zito was smart to go with an experienced guy. Paul's always been a great talker. He's better on TV than he is a coach. There's no denying that. But I'll tell you what. He's gone into a situation where... Bill Zito, a first-time GM, has come in and made some unbelievable moves. And Paul has been a perfect coach for this group. He gets a Kachuk in there. He gets a Montour coming in. He gets, you know, Sam Reinhardt. Sam Reinhardt. And Reinhardt. I mean, and Bennett. And so all of a sudden, and Bobrovsky and... Forslund, who I mentioned to you guys two months ago, has made Ekblad into a real player. I think I was, was I on this show? I do so many damn shows. I don't know who I said what to now. But anyway. It Forsling's feels like you a do a star. lot of shows. I think you only do ours. Yeah, Forslund's a star. What's the only, yeah. Forslund's a star. <laughs> and you know what? And Paul has been able to, you know, his his cuteness has been really good with the group, you know? He sort of, he sort of, he, t- he yaps after games like they play cocky, you know, <laughs> which I really like, which I really like. He's cocky and you're cocky when you're winning. And I really like, I think he, I think he adds to the dimension of the cockiness of the group. They believe they can beat anybody. 
And and Paul is, has helped that. Zito, uh, you know, I know Bill, I knew Billy Zito as an agent, but this guy has gone in and done a, a fabulous job. Thanks to Brad Tree Living, sending a Bennett and Kachuk. Thank God. <laughs> He's making Zito look like a genius. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, we have so many questions that we have to get to that I got to get started here. Uh, Cheldon Keith gets hired by the New Jersey Devils. What are your thoughts on that hire? Like, serious. <laughs> what is going on? Doug, like, serious. Come on. Doug, One of the what? winningest coaches in the regular season. Ever. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, serious. I, I don't get the the... Like what? It, like I love Tommy Fitz. I love Tommy Fitz. He he was a great player for me. Like I'm sorry, I, I don't get this one. I I know he did a great regular season job. I know Toronto's. So top, you don't like I, the hiring? I, you don't like? I don't it? like the hiring. No. Really? I like and I like I like. Look, I I respect Sheldon Keith. I love the fact that he paid his dues as a as a coach in Pembroke and Sault Ste. Marie and the Marlies and the Leafs, and he's done a good job. But I I don't get that move by Tommy Fitz. Okay, what's the problem? It. He's he can't win in the playoffs. What don't you like? Well, Jersey have got to make the playoffs first of all, so he's good at that. Keeps good at that. But I mean, his team loves to play in the regular season. I I I just thought Tommy would go with a with a guy that had a little better record in the playoffs, but look, I, look, maybe he'll be great. I, I don't know. I, I was caught off guard by the being enamored with it. I really was. I was caught off guard, but that's fine. I can say that. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> you ass. can wear whatever you know? shirt you want. Yeah. This is a, this is a, a what's it? What's a nice one. actually. Under Armour. And Jordan I got the Speed red special. Manly, uh, I got the red Vanley uh, shorts. I heard, I heard Sean Avery doing an interview, you know, and they said, what about your wardrobe, Sean? And he, you know, he's doing an interview on being on Oppenheimer, you know? And, <laughs> um, and he said, red Vanley all the way, red Vanley all the way, pants, shorts, you know? So, so I'm a red. So when Sean Avery said it, I'm a red Vanley guy now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Fashion so. advice. This is great. Okay. Well, uh, if we're going to stay on um, a little off ice before uh, we get your thoughts, maybe on uh, the but, Oilers in Dallas. Just by the way, I want to know who Tree Living, who the nine guys were he interviewed. I know he interviewed Baruby and McClellan. Who are the other seven? I know one guy got a 30 minute phone interview. Who are the other seven? Who I'm kind of with Doug would, on this. Would you be, would I, you be, I mean, we called everyone. Um, well, Gerard, Gerard Gallant got a call, did he not? Yeah, he, he got a phone interview. Yeah. Okay. Phone interview, yeah. Um, uh, did you get a call? McClellan. There's... Yeah, we we. No, had... that's three. <laughs> I'm wondering, I know three. Who are the other six? <laughs> um, John Gruden from the American League, they call him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm stuck. Should we? Uh... Well, I, like, I... Anyway, look, Barubi got the job. He's a good hire. Um, I, I looked up Barubi's record, you know, and I thought, okay, just a minute. He took over partway through the season and won the Stanley Cup in St. Louis. And I think he lost in the first round the next year, the first round the next year, and then got fired the next year. So I, I am I wrong? Not that? enough that for record? not not enough for you for for an easy hiring. No, I look. I think he's the right type of guy. We're into that mode now. Of you know the talk at tougher style, love, you know, tougher love, ever, tougher love, and I I like that totally about Barubi. I love that about him. I really like Craig as a player. He's just a a grinder. Uh, the last game I coached for the Panthers, Craig got suspended in that game for three games. And I remember him coming to my office after the game and apologizing. I said, "Hey, Craig, don't don't worry about it. I think I'm getting fired tomorrow, so don't apologize to me. <laughs> apologize to the next guy." <laughs> So anyway, um, he, look, I, I think it's a good hire. I think they need a little bit of tough love, and I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping we're going to see a little different group. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't care if the coach is Scotty Bowman or Don Shula. They better get some different players. They better get some different players. From what I'm watching at night, they better get some different players. They're, on, they're working on it. They got the coach. They got the GM. Yep. They got the coach. 
They got the WNBA team now in the building, which is great. I'm thrilled about that. We're not sure where they're so playing. So now, now, are they playing in the, in the big building? I don't know. No, they're playing Coca-Cola, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they are? Yeah. What's Coca-Cola? Old, the old Rico Coliseum. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Okay. Anyway, I'm, right, I think it's a great that. move. I love it. Okay. But anyway, I, I just think that um, they, they, they got to fix this team, and it'll be – they started with Craig. Okay. So, uh, Waddell resigned. Or, according to you, maybe got fired. Which one is it? Yeah, like a lot of guys I find resign as general managers and head coaches. <laughs> who the hell resigns as a GM and who resigns as a head coach? Can somebody fill me in on that? I don't know. <laughs> somebody who just... Scotty Bowman didn't even resign. Some... Scotty Bowman got fired in Pittsburgh. Everybody said he resigned. He got fired, and then he ends up in Detroit and wins like three cups. So, Nobody resigns. Come on. It's a bunch of BS. Could Waddell have What's, left an owner that might be a little bit more difficult than most? Uh, maybe the fact that he'd like to bring his salary up to, you know, the year 2000? Look, I, I, you know, I know they have the – I talked about the genius group in Carolina with you guys a couple of weeks ago when I was criticizing their goaltend. And I know Borny picked them to win the cup and, and Freddie to win the – the, whatever the con smite <laughs> and I didn't like their goaltending and I said it and I'm thinking okay this is three years in a row with the same goaltenders and something had to give there Brenda Moore is not going anywhere uh Don Waddell who's a fine guy a fine guy and you know Dundon Toluski's the guy that calls all the shots there don't ever kid yourself I talked to a guy that worked for them a year ago and told me nobody does anything in Carolina, unless Toluski approves. No, Tulski. <laughs> Eric his name Tulski. Is. I don't give a rat's ass. Toluski to me. <laughs> so that's, he calls all the shots, okay? So why do you need a GM if he's calling all the shots? He's been you named know, interim GM. And he'll probably keep that well, he's for been, a very he's long time. He's been the GM the last three years. Why would they name him interim now? Come on, you know that. You know that, Borneo. That's a, that's a bunch of BS. Yeah. He's been running the show for... Right? Am I wrong? I mean, I don't know. I, I Sounds so right. So every, everybody's got uh, Waddell that I talked to linked to uh, done deal to Columbus if he wants it as president. President? Yeah. More business side than I think GM or a hockey side. But right now... I See, what I hear is that Columbus has been sitting on... In a perfect world, they go get um, maybe Holland coming off of Edmonton in his five years. Or they wanted Gorton, who obviously Montreal yeah. has not given a green light to. Those are the yeah. two names. Is that owner going to pay a president and a GM big names like that? Is that? I mean, Doug would know more than me, but it seems like a lot of money. Um, yeah, I look, Mike Priest is the one now, and J.D. are making the calls. And, and Mike Priest has always been the president of the team on the business side. And he's also the guy that runs McConnell's uh, empire. He, he looks at not Worthington Industries, which is their main business, but all their side businesses Mike Priest runs. And he also is the president of business side of the Blue Jackets or president of the Blue Jackets. Mike is heavily involved with J.D. picking the GM. I... I uh, JD's leaving. We know that Mike Priest is probably stepping back from from his his workload. I can see Don being a good choice there. I, I can see Don being a good choice as the president. Uh, but Don, like I know Don was business guy, but Don Waddell's been a hockey lifer. He's a quality guy. He's always been a great person. He did a good job in a tough situation. Atlanta was a disaster, but he was there for a long time. And then he went and went as pro scout in Pittsburgh, and then he went to Carolina. You know, I, I think he's a good hockey man. I think he's a good guy. I don't see him as a president of the business side. I see him as a hockey guy. I'm sorry. Yeah. And if hey, Ken Holland... I'm just I mean, telling you... Is Ken you Holland going to want to go to Columbus as GM? I can see Ken Holland going as president of Hockey Ops. I don't see Kenny going as a GM. Am I missing something? Somebody once told me from Summerside PEI, I'm not telling you what's the truth. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. I know. Fran McLean, that was her favorite. Mother <laughs> used to tell me that every week. Doug, I'm, 
I'm not telling you it's the truth. I'm just telling you what I heard. So, <laughs> look, there is I mean, a ton to be good, heard. They're good names for the Blue Jackets. And you know what? Um, the Blue Jackets have got a lot of prospects, um, but they've got to turn around the perception. And, you know, they've got some good names there. Okay, I mean, Holl Kenny Holland and, and Don Waddell are friends. They go back a long way. It'd be a good team. Okay, well, quickly, uh, did Edmonton show you last night that they – they're on their way to a Stanley Cup final. You know what the what the key was to me is Skinner comes in and in the first five minutes uh, showed me that this guy's not going to lose his net again. I mean, he he, you know, a couple big time saves early in the game. I thought he had a, a superb performance. I love the way they are five on five. I love the little things, the face offs. Ryan's winning a ton of face offs. Uh, the big boys are engaged. Their power play is, is humming. Their their penalty killing has been spectacular. There's not much not to like. Boucher has become a star. 26 minutes a game this kid's playing. We knew he was a great player with London. He, he, he had took a while to get it going. I mean, this kid has taken a big step. Talk about a guy that gets the puck to the net. Yeah. You know? Talk about a guy from the point that finds the net with his shot. So there's a lot to think. You know, they're they're going to be a they're going to be a tough team to beat. Well, I think you know what. I know if you look at Sammy is there, go back and I said that I expected the finals to be Florida and Edmonton in the finals. Just check it out, will you? Just I I think I don't know if I dreamt it or if I actually I think you said, said it. it. Yeah, All I right. can confirm you said. Well, it. listen, yeah. we got to go. Great job, though. <laughs> listen. From from leaving Florida to PEI, you know, unlike the Canadian dollar, man, you didn't lose thirty five percent. You are okay. Right I, I was, there. you know what? I've been worried sick since uh, the last show. I've been worried sick because s somebody happened to drop a glass of wine on my desk, <laughs> and I picked it up on the show, and I thought maybe that I'd get fired, which I was hoping would happen, and that you guys might as well. And I'm glad to see you're still there. Well, well we, we, we wouldn't fire you. We'd give you the chance to resign, Doug. We appreciate the... Uh... Oh, yeah. oh, no, I'm going to resign. I'm like all the GMs and coaches. I'm resigning. We appreciate the uh, alcohol-free... Uh, episode no, today no, no, no. he's so I'm quick getting, to judge no, no, just a minute. i'm getting paid two million a year and i'm gonna resign no i, 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 I think i can do better than that oh you know, or three hey, hey, hey. or four or five hey he was not making two million i can guarantee not you that Carolina, yeah. okay right. if i'm making two hey listen i'll let i'll get, let you in if i'm making 250 i might have stayed <laughs> <laughs> all right enjoy your weekend buddy thanks for doing this doug take, mcclain take nice, thanks man take care have fun all right i think we went a little long um, <laughs> the coaches, the coaches, somebody text it in. Barube, McClellan, Gallant, Everson, Woodcroft, Julian, Vigneault, Gruden, and they asked Brindamore. So that's nine people. They, there you go. That, Someone texted. Where did they get the list from? That's just their opinion? That's or? who they guessed. Yeah, okay. It's a good list. Good it's list. a good list Thank from you. the texter. I, I, think, I think he did great. Can you text that to, to Doug? I will text to Doug. I'll jam it down Doug. his throat. I, I don't know if Doug's, I mean, sometimes they still listen, but last week when I was talking about how beautiful his A-frame cottage was, yes, he emailed me and i was like oh he's like i've heard you loved a-frame cottages yeah, so he emailed me both do yeah and he was like here's a picture <laughs> and there's no picture you didn't attach it <laughs> come on matt <laughs> so i didn't know what to say <laughs> i want to blow him off <laughs> but he didn't attach a picture <laughs> we, well what we saw of it was beautiful. coming next week Take so a little go, time. Boys, I love this new gig. I don't even have to talk. Buddy, one Two guests to show, no Sammy talk. One hour flies <laughs> by. Uh, our thanks to Ray Ferraro and, of course, our very own Doug McClain. All right, Rangers, 1-1 one, one after tonight. Rangers get one tonight. You good with that, Sammy? Agreed. All right, let's go, Rangers, 1-1. One, one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening all week long. If you get a chance, give us a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, have a great weekend, and we're back Monday on The Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Or Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Bye.